Okay, welcome back to the second part of this video, uh, making the rubber motor. You need several items to be able to make the rubber motor. Since the rules say that the motor cannot weigh more than two grams, you need a set of scales to be able to weigh the motor with. Uh, you need a container to hold the rubber motor. Believe me, if you try to put rubber freehand on this tray, it's gonna fall all over everything. So the plastic cup makes a good container to hold the rubber while you try to weigh it out. Another thing you're going to need, it's possible to make the rubber motor and use the rubber motor without the O-rings. There are no O-rings in the Alpha kit. The O-rings are these little black rubber circles. They're actually what they say they are. They're O-shaped rings. They're like rubber donuts. The reason you use the O-rings on the motor is it makes it much, much easier to attach the winder and attach the motor to the airplane with the O-ring on each end of the rubber motor because when you get it wound up, you know, imagine a tight, little tightly wound rubber band, there is nothing to hold on to nor an opening in the end of the motor to put on the, on the airplane. So the O-rings come in very handy. Uh, you can buy O-rings probably at a hardware store, uh, Lowe's Home Depot, or from any of the vendors that sell Science Olympiad airplanes. You will need two O-rings. The O-rings are part of the motor, so they are included in the weight of the motor. So the first thing you want to do is make sure your scale is set to zero. So you tear the scales by pushing, or zero the scales by pushing the tear button. Once it reads zero, put your O-rings in the, in the cup. And as you can see, the O-rings weigh a little over a tenth of a gram. The rubber motor, or rubber that comes in the Alpha kit is 3 30 seconds wide, a rubber strip and you want two grams in the motor so take some of the rubber and start feeding it into the cup and watch your scales until you get to two grams because two grams is the maximum weight for this motor all right so right now and if you hold the rubber at a right angle to the lip of the cup you're basically weighing what's in the cup plus this little bit. You don't have all this other hanging over the edge. So you try to get two grams, measure it out. All right, that's a little over two grams. Just clip it off with your scissors. And I ended up with 2.2 grams, which is a little bit overweight. So I just snip off a very small bit. That got it down to 2.1. Snip off a little bit more. Okay, so now what's in the cup weighs 2.06 grams. I'm not worried about six hundredth of a gram because we still have to tie the motor together. So once you get the amount of rubber that you need weighed out, dump everything out of the cup. Take the tag end of the rubber, slide on your O-rings. And again, you can do this without the O-rings. It just is more difficult to use on the airplane. Once you get both O-rings on, now you need to tie the ends of the rubber together to make a loop. So 
just put the tag ends of the rubber together where the ends are even and tie a simple overhand knot. Just run the ends through one time like that. It makes a simple overhand knot. Then you want to pull the knot tight. Well, since we want to use as much of the two rams of rubber as we can to power the airplane, while the knot is still a little bit loose, sort of slide the knot down toward the end leave enough to hold on to, and then just pull it very, very tight. You're not gonna break the rubber, believe me. And hold it tight for a few seconds because this is an elastomer, it stretches, and the longer you keep tension on it, the tighter the knot gets. Now, a single knot may not hold under tension. Uh, sometimes the rubber will actually slip through the knot so then you just take the two loose tag ends of the rubber and make another knot, overhand knot, and pull it tight against the original knot. And that will secure the knot so that it will not pull back apart. Now the loose tag ends, that contributes nothing to the power of the airplane, only weight and we want to make as light an airplane as we can. So just snip off the loose tag ends and your rubber motor is now complete. When you wind or put the motor on the airplane, always put the knotted end of the rubber motor at the tail end of the airplane. You don't want this knot rotating with the propeller slapping around on the motor stick. So now you have a motor that is ready to be wound up and placed on your airplane. There is another way that can make a motor a little bit more accurately. We wanted two grams. We just tied this motor together and I check my scales, make sure that it's still on zero, tear the scales, put it back in the container. Okay, tying the knot and having the loose ends and trimming those loose ends off, instead of having two grams, I now only have 1.9 grams. So there's a way to more accurately Weigh your motor out to two grams to start with and tie it and still end up with a two gram motor. Same procedure. Start off with your O-rings, if you have them. Place them in the cup because you have to weigh them with the motor. Again, just like before, weigh out two grams of rubber And this time we want to be fairly accurate with our weight. Okay, trim just a little bit more off, it's slightly over two grams. All right, right now it is weighing 2.03 grams. Continue just like you did with the original motor. Install both O-rings. Now you still need to tie it together just like before. So again, just make a simple overhand knot in the tag ends of the rubber strip. Loosely make your knot. Now, what we need to do now is apply a little bit of lubricant to this rubber. 
Now for rubber lubricant, you can either use a silicone grease like this, which is Dow 33, or you can use uh, something like uh, Armor All. Armor All makes a good rubber lubricant. The only thing I don't like about Armor All is it's a liquid and it's messy. Uh, can get spilled on the floor and make a big mess. So I'm going to apply just a little bit the rubber lubricant behind the knot, not in front of it. And the reason I do that is because when I pull this knot tight, I want it to be able to slide. Now I take a pair of uh, hemostats, which hemostats are sort of like uh, a clamp well, they are a clamp, I mean, they're used in the operating room, but they're self-locking. Clamp the two ends of the rubber motor in the hemostat right at the very, very end. You may be able to see that there's almost no rubber strip sticking out of the hemostats. Now, just let the hemostat dangle, take the two strands of rubber, and start pulling it tight. That knot will slide down the rubber until it jams against the tip of the hemostat. Now hold it tight for a few seconds and let the knot settle in. Remove it from the hemostat. Now notice I've got a knot now at the end of the rubber with a very, very small fraction of an inch of rubber sticking out the end. Now since we use lubrication to tie this knot uh, and we no longer have any material to tie the lock knot on, we have to use a little bit of glue to hold that knot. And your uh, super glue is the glue to use here. Just, all you need is a very, very small dot behind the knot. Be sure and apply glue only behind the knot. And all this does is just locks. You can hardly see the glue that I applied. That just locks that together. If we did not apply the glue to this knot, as soon as we tried to wind it, it would slip right through and basically your rubber motor would break. So that's why we apply the glue there. So let's weigh this motor now, see how close we came to two grams. Okay, we're right on two grams. So the difference between using the hem hemostats and not is the original motor ended up weighing 1.9 grams. This motor weighs exactly 2 grams, which is exactly what we wanted. So the power potential of the second motor is greater because we actually have more rubber mass in the motor than we did in the original. That is the only reason why you would tie a knot with a hemostat.